What's up, everybody? Welcome back to Tastes Like Music. Jason and Joe here. It's 1994 Deep Dive Week. Uh, we've spent a couple months listening to as many albums as we can from 1994. We've already counted down our top 25 albums. Two different videos, Joe's List, My List. Go check those out if you've not seen them. Uh, today, we are going to do our top 25 songs uh, combined. One video. Going to go back and forth. Um, you want to kick it off? Number 25? Yeah, it's, it's Rocket. Let's do this thing. 1994, tons of good songs. I tried not to just pick like five songs from Grace and five songs from Super Unknown. I tried to spread it out. So my number 25 is going to be 21st Century Digital Boy from Bad Religion. This is an interesting one because it was a remake of a song that they had already written and released a couple years, I think it was like two, three years prior. Uh, but Epitaph wanted a little, you know, a little more shine on it, so re-recorded, added a, a pretty cool killer guitar solo, um, and it just sounds better. It sounds of the of the time of the pop punk era, but it's still you know hard and fast and, and left wing and and all that good stuff that you want from punk. But it just sounds better, and that's why I like it. Uh, my number 25 is from a record that did not make my top 25 albums list, um, but it's a great song. It's Possum Kingdom by Toadies. Just a classic alt-rock tune, killer riffage. I love that main, like, kind of rhythmic riff. Plus, you've got that, I don't know if it's a tremolo bar or how he's really doing that bending effect, but uh, it's awesome. Just crazy, unhinged lyrics. you got some, like, reverse effects making it extra creepy and it's just unsettling, and it totally rocks. Totally forgot that song is from 94. That's a good one. Uh, my number 24 is going to be It's Good to Be King by Thomas Petty. This is just, you know, it's it's a simple song, and it's just some, it's something that Petty trades in so well. These simple kind of, you know, maybe like five chord kind of things, but it's super relatable. The lyrics, his down-home vocals the simplicity of the piano and the way it kind of like springs and explodes into the chorus. And I love that little riff that connects the two sections. Like there's almost two chorus parts. And that outro is just amazing. That circular piano part, the minor strings, it just makes it feel so big and, and cinematic. It's my favorite song off Wildflowers. Okay, my number 24 is Molly 16 Candles by Sponge. Sponge's Ode to Molly Ringwald, I guess. Uh, just a great rock song. Pounding Toms. Love Vinnie Dombrowski's vocal delivery. And just completely in love with those like sparkly chorused guitars that are just like the icing on top of the cake. I think it's great. So Cool. Good song again. A lot of good songs here. My number 23. This is a, a song. I don't know why. People don't seem to be as high on this one as I am. But I love Iris from Live from Throwing Copper. I love the dynamics on display, the loud, soft, the slow, fast, the intimate to anthemic. The drums and bass are absolute ass kickers. And I just love Kowalczyk's, you know, melodramatic, over the top, just excellent vocal performance on it. And I think it's just a really great song. And honestly, I could have picked nine or 10 different songs from that album. This one just always, I don't know, I've always held it a little higher than the rest. Uh, my number 23 is my favorite song by Cake, Rock and Roll Lifestyle. Yeah, just hilarious lyrics, probably relatable for anyone who watches this channel. And just a really cool, unique sound. Great guitar work from Greg Brown. Sound like a broken record. And uh, yeah, it's great. All right, my number 22. This album did not make my list, but it's pretty good. It's not as good as that first one, though. I got Water Runs Dry, Boys, Two Men. And there's just something about vocal perfection that I love. It always, always gets me. And here it's, it's a very simple song. It's just, you know, a verse and a chorus a couple of times. Like there's nothing weird or out of the box or, you know, it doesn't have like a, you know, the one super low vocal dude doing like his little like breakdown, uh, talking to the woman part. It's just a really well-crafted, tight three minutes of just perfect vocals and uh, it's, it's sublime. I love it. 
Uh, going way deep from my number 22, I've got Sunny Sailor Boy by Luca Bloom. And uh, Luca Bloom just has like the greatest acoustic guitar sound. I'm uh, pretty sure he's, you know, using his pickups, which usually most guitarists only use the pickup live and they'll just mic up the acoustic for their recordings. But he just gets this gorgeous tone and his voice is so great. And that's all it is, really. There's there's a female backing vocal in here uh, a little bit, but mostly just his voice and the guitar and it sounds huge and adding anything else would just wreck it. Just a, a really gorgeous song. Okay, haven't heard of that one. My number 21. Let me go with it's another album I could have picked like anything. But this this week, this month, I'm feeling the day I tried to live from Soundgarden. Dark and gorgeous, psychedelic guitar is great. I love Ben Shepherd's rumbling bass. Love the bass tone from him. He doesn't get much credit, but he's got a great tone. Uh Matt Cameron, just a perfect beat. And of course, Cornell's towering vocals, just unceasingly powerful, but also unbelievably catchy. And this one, this is kind of them in alternative rock mode, but you know, they nail it, of course. Uh, much to Joe's dismay, my number 21 is Cut Your Hair by Pavement. It's the most basic Pavement pick, but I think it's their most well-known song, you know, probably f uh, for a reason. It's got great hooks. It's really infectious. It's kind of irreverent lyrics about, you know, pursuing a career in music. And it's a lot of fun and catchy. And yeah, it's a great, great alt rock, indie rock tune. I disagree. Uh, my number 20, I'm going to go with Sabotage. Beastie Boys, just a freaking atomic bomb of energy. I don't know. I, I wouldn't have expected a group of cheeky white rappers to be able to pull off something so heavy, uh, so guitar driven, so, you know, punk almost, like garage almost. It's just, you know, really impressive that they were able to put together a song, you know, this powerful. It's really cool. It has an iconic music video. It just rules. All right. People who have not watched the original Songs of the Year episode will be blindsided by this, but those who pay careful attention to the channel will remember that I had this on my Hot 100 list in that episode, and it is Another Night by The Real McCoy. It is just, I think, a perfect pop song. It's one of those songs that I was never really like a fan of. I never owned it. I was never listening to it or sitting around putting it on. It was just kind of like in the air. I heard it places probably like the roller skating rink or wherever I was as a kid and it worked it its way into my consciousness and now it's just like pure nostalgia and uh, yeah it's it's a rare song of that ilk that I think is uh pretty much perfect wow that is, that is a really great pick I'm jealous that I didn't put it on my list uh, I listened to that whole album it's not great but there are a couple just monumental bangers and yeah that's it's a great pick damn uh, I'm not going to sub out this one for another night, but I kind of want to, but I won't. Uh, what do you want from me? Pink Floyd making my list. The Division Bell did not. But I like it. Four star album. Uh, but I think this is their best song that they've written since The Wall. It's searing. It's angry. A retort to fading personal relationships. Maybe Roger Waters involved there. Maybe a little put down to him. I'm not sure. Uh, but it would fit. Amazing guitar. Amazing guitar tone from Gilmore. But I think the MVP here, the keys, Richard Wright's back and you know his his tone, um, his synths just sound so good. They sound like they're straight out of the 70s. And that's one of my favorite uh, synth tones of all time. So, yeah, so it's a great song. Number 19 for me is Sloan with Snowsuit Sound. People may have been surprised that I didn't have Twice Removed on my albums list, but I think Twice Removed, even though it's like considered like it'll show up on like the top five best Canadian albums of all time. And uh, I think it's actually right before Sloan gets great, but I do think there's a couple great songs on it. Um, awesome fuzz bass on this track from Chris Murphy. The chorus hits so hard, it's super catchy, and it's got some amazing shaker in the verses, giving way to hand claps in the chorus, uh, just all that percussion moving the song along and making it feel great. And uh, yeah, this one's by Jay Ferguson, who's my favorite 
melodicist in the band. All of his songs are always super catchy and uh, no exception. All right, my number 18, I'm going to go another album. Didn't make my list. I thought it would, but it kind of fell off the end there. But I do love Wiser Time from the Black Crows. They're the masters of the retro sound. And this is just a gorgeous sonic collage. Throws it right back to the 1970s. Channels the Stones faces. But I think this one also has a bit of Skinnerd in it. Uh, love the plaintive longing pedal steel. Just amazing. Maybe the best of the whole year. And uh, yeah, it's just a, a classic sounding mournful masterpiece from them. All right, number 18 for me, I'm going to go with Still Remains by STP. Uh, just a great deep cut from Purple. Uh, it's got really like the super cool psychedelic vibe to it. Great chords. It's kind of almost cashmere-esque in the, uh, I don't know if that's the pre-chorus or what you'd call that, but uh, also has some of Robert DeLeo's best bass playing. Just the bass line is incredible on this song. And I think the lyrics are really interesting and cool too, where he says, uh, if you should die before me, ask if you can bring a friend. Uh, yeah, just a really cool song. My number 17, Super Nintendo, Sega Genesis. When I was dead broke, man, I couldn't picture this. Those are the lines from Biggie Small's masterpiece. Juicy, this is one of the most instantly recognizable rap songs ever. I think it's a great testament to how unbelievably charismatic Biggie, Biggie Smalls was. You hang on every word of his, you know, broken, tragic, hard upbringing. And you know, the sample, Matume's Juicy Fruit, is just an inspired pick. Makes the whole thing come alive. Uh, my number 17 is Backwater by the Meat Puppets. Uh, just a 90s modern rock classic. Those opening leads, it's almost like a solo to start the song. is just soaring and... Uh, super catchy verse, super catchy chorus. It's got a great bridge. I love the harmonies that come in on the bridge. It's just uh, uh, one of those rock songs that when you hear it, it just sounds like a hit. It's just great. I think it's well recorded and pretty much perfect. For number 16, I'm going to go with Train of Consequences from Megadeth. Like I said in the album video, it's just one of the best approximations of a chugging train ever. That it's great it's an awesome riff i love it love the solo love the whole vibe kind of cowboyish all right well one of my very favorite albums from 1994 i did not include on my albums list because it's a compilation and it is probably my favorite compilation of all time it is called dgc rarities and I've got several songs from it on my list. This is the first of them. I've got Einstein on the Beach by Counting Crows, uh, a song that they worked on early, uh, didn't make it onto their first record. They didn't, uh, I don't think they even tried to record it. I think it's an older recording that just handed it over to DGC and uh, it became an accidental hit. And I think they were kind of, upset that it became so big because it wasn't recorded the way they wanted it to be and it actually became their first number one on modern rock tracks i think mr jones only went to number two but it's just super catchy uh kind of buoyant great summer summer pop rock track and uh yeah it's great that's an interesting one because i don't think i had ever heard it before and i randomly i don't stumbled onto it listening to a spotify playlist and I couldn't believe it. It went to number one and was a bigger hit than Mr. Jones because it's never played on the radio. And you hear Mr. Jones five times an hour. I think I think its stay on the charts was much briefer, but it, Mr. Jones hung around forever. And that one kind of that one kind of peaked and, and went away. Interesting. My number 15, I'm going back to Soundgarden. I got to get them on here twice. I'm going to go with My Wave. I uh, love the 5-4 time signature. It's an E-E-B-B-B-B tuning, which is never even heard of that before, but that's pretty cool. It has a delightfully catchy oceanic feel to it. It's a wonderful groove. I love the bass line. I love the drum sound, kind of trash can, kind of thwacking away. Uh, but it's kind of bright and, you know, soaring for Soundgarden they're pretty morose usually and this one's a little more you know a little more energy a little more freedom all right I am going back to the meat puppets for coming down uh this one more of their country cow punk roots uh as opposed to backwater which is 
uh, pretty much just a straight up rock tune. This one's a real boot stomper. There's great guitar work, and I love the closing, like show stopping a cappella break at the end. It's like the four part, it's almost like barbershop harmonies. It sounds so good. Uh, just, yeah, it's a great song. All right, number 14, I'm going to go with a little Suede. Another album, could have picked a whole bunch of songs from, but I'm going to go with The Asphalt World. It's nine minutes long. It's got some progressive elements, some awesome 70s style organ work, uh, a long, like four minute sort of guitar workout from Bernard Butler. Uh, some great riffs in it as well. Brett Anderson's vocals are awesome. Just really different for Britpop, especially in 1994. All right, I got some Joe Core for my number 14. We'll see if he has this or anything from this on his list. I've got Jack Names the Planets by Ash. Uh, I first heard this on the Angus soundtrack, which came out in 1995. And I was really into Weezer already. And, and this had a lot of those attributes, but it was like faster and the vocals were mixed more quiet. So it was just kind of like a dirtier, just as fun, kind of uh, sloppier, but interesting version of what Weezer was doing. Uh, so yeah, I was into it. Damn, you're like one-upping me here. I don't have anything from Ash on my list, but that's a good pick. Uh, number 13, going with some Alice in Chains, I Stay Away. This is the song that made me start, and yes, it made me start downloading music illegally. Heard this, and I, I probably had heard it before, but I really heard it for the first time on the radio and just totally being dumbstruck, the band could combine like that beauty and that much darkness in the same song. The shift from that verse into the pre-chorus is like falling off a cliff. Like the change in tone and mood is ridiculous. I love the string arrangement at the end. Yeah, I heard this and I went and downloaded Napster and started just, you know, stealing music from the internet. So thank you, Allison Chains. Uh, my number 13, going back to DGC Rarities, I've got Jamie by Weezer. Uh, this was the UK B-side to Buddy Holly, uh, written as an ode to the band's first attorney, Jamie Young. It's the only official Weezer track with Jason Cropper on it before Brian Bell joined the band. Uh, it was re recorded as part of a school project. Uh, Dale Johnson at Loyola Marymount recorded the band for his... Uh, recording engineering <laughs> degree. So yeah, it's a good one. Uh, my number 12, go with a little Dave Matthews Band, album one, track one. Probably the best pop song that Dave ever wrote. Make the best of what's around. I love the way it combines the prolific talents of the entire band, but focuses it into four minutes of just really good pop music. Bands like Red Hot Chili Peppers, you know, everyone's a great player, but you know, they can't write a, a brilliant pop song like this. It, it takes a lot of wrangling, soothing of egos to get everybody into the pop mode when you're that good of players. But I think Dave Matthews does a great job here. Uh, the bass line's great. Carter Buford's drums are awesome, like super powerful, precise, complex. Uh, the sax solo from Leroy Moore is awesome. The acoustic guitar is great from Dave. And just all these elements that could... You know, send this stuff into jam band heaven. Could be a 12 minute, you know, whatever people assume Dave Matthews is like, but it's not. It's a really concise, excellently written, catchy pop song. And uh, I think that's very impressive that they're able to do that. Right. My number 12 is Lilac Wine by Jeff Buckley. Uh, this is his interpretation of the James Shelton penned tune which had been recorded by a bunch of other people before, probably most famously Nina Simone and Eartha Kitt. Um, it's a great song. I think Buckley's version is immaculate, and it, I think it demonstrates, first of all, his raw ability as a singer, but also his emotional depth, his understanding of the history of the song and his ability as an arranger. And I think all of it is in there, and I think uh, I've got another Buckley coming up, one of his originals. I wanted to get one original in one of his covers, because I think he's a great um, interpreter of songs. My number, what are we on here? 11. I'm going to go with Bad Reputation by Freddie Johnston. It's a really well-written song. It's got Dave Scram from uh, Yola Tango on it. It's got Butch Big playing drums. 
Uh, but, you know, it comes down to the songwriting and Freedy's just crafted a really good plaintive kind of sad piece full of longing and loss, but in a delicious pop arrangement. And uh, so, yeah, it's just a, a really good, really simple song. Uh, my number 11 is Plowed by Sponge. Getting back to them for the second time. Just an awesome guitar riff. I think it's so good. Uh, great vocals again. And the Say a Prayer for Me pre-chorus is is just such a good hook. And the song is just relentless. They're just like coming right at you the whole time. It never really lets up. And uh, yeah, it's just a great, great rocker. All right, my number 10, the little Pearl Jam, Nothing Man. I think Eddie delivers just one of the simplest, softest, least grunge vocal parts of his career. Lyrically, one of my favorites from Pearl Jam, Masterpiece of Regret and Longing. The line, caught a bolt of lightning, curse the day he let it go. is just always, always in my mind. I love that line. Never forget it. And it's just a, a great, you know, Pearl Jam had shown that they could do soft, but I don't think anything that they did previous is kind of as gentle and just kind of stripped down as this one. So, yeah, I really love it. Uh, number 10 for me is Barbarossa by Sordid Humor. Um, I went back and looked at our songs video and I actually had this on the list then as well. So this is definitely not my first week talking about Sordid Humor. No idea what's going on lyrically on this track. It's about a girl huffing gasoline maybe and falling asleep and having crazy dreams. Uh, but it's full of evocative imagery. There's like blue macaws and parking lots in Africa, islands in the Green Sea, but lots of tension, shifts between sections. There's great strings on it, but they're not mixed very loud. Like you almost barely notice them, but the strings are great. Uh, this great buildup at the end of the song, Adam Duritz on backing vocals, and yeah, it's just a, a really cool song. That more, more people should check out. I don't think anyone really remembers it or knows it. My number nine, I'm going with God from Tori Amos. It's a great song. It's a smart song. Clever lyrics, slinky beat, great bass from George Porter Jr. of the Meters. Uh, another one with great lyrics. God, sometimes you just don't come through. Do you need a woman to look after you? I think it's hilarious. Very smart. Uh, the level of sophistication instrumentation is outstanding. And, you know, this type of music, like you can draw a direct line to Alanis Morissette and Fiona Apple. Uh, criminal, you ought to know. This is obviously a very important <laughs> uh, song for that style. And that strangled guitar work is awesome too. Love that. Okay, number nine for me is my second time hitting Sloan. I've got Coax Me. Uh, this is, I think, one of their best early songs. This one's by Chris Murphy, who uh, I think is really finding his writing style here, really twisting and turning phrases around there's some uh theories about this being about uh kurt cobain and courtney love uh there's some funny lines about the band consolidated he says uh if i drink consult uh if i drink concentrated oj can i can i still think consolidated's okay i guess consolidated was like this hardcore band that was all vegan and uh but then he has the line about uh uh, it's not the band I hate, it's their fans. And people thought because it followed the consolidated line, it was about them. But allegedly, reading about it today, that is that line is actually about Kate Bush, which I think is funny. <laughs> Screw him. But yeah, it's a great catchy song. It's uh, got a great video too. I didn't know there was Kate Bush backlash back then. That's, that's interesting. Uh, my number eight, This is this is the most uplifting song I think ever written. You Gotta Be by Desiree. I love this song. It makes me cry when I, when I hear it. It's, it does it actually, but it makes me want to cry when I hear it. It is so sappy. It's dated sounding, but it's, it's just perfect. The, that chorus hits, you got to be bad. You got to be bold. You got to be wiser. It's, it's great. All I know, I know love will save the day. Cheesy as hell, but I think Desiree delivers a, a brilliantly restrained vocal. Uh, just wraps you up in a big warm hug. My number eight is I Don't Think So by Dinosaur Jr. I think it's one of Jay's best, most concise and like clear pieces of songwriting that he ever wrote. Um, it's a song I think you could easily strip down to acoustic guitar and it would work 
perfectly fine. I think the chorus is great. The lyrics are so good. Jay often described the band's sound as ear bleeding country. And this is one of those songs that I think uh, really fits that descriptor. All right. My number seven, get a little disco on here. Girls and Boys from Blur. I think it's pretty funny. This is like one of their two biggest hits in America because it's so British and so disco. It's so much fun. There's so much pep. Alex James's bass line is just disgusting. It's great. I love it. I love dancing to this song. It just makes me want to, you know, groove. Love it. It's great. My number seven is The World Has Turned and Left Me Here by Weezer from the Blue Album. Uh, always been a favorite of mine from that record. Even as an 11-year-old, I guess I had a bit of a, a melancholy streak. But it wasn't just like a sad ballad. The guitars are really heavy. Uh, it's like almost a blanket of fuzz the way they're layered. And I love the counter melody at the end, too. It's, uh, yeah, great. All right, number six. One from Weezer for me as well. I got Buddy Holly, though. I think it's power pop perfection. It's loud. The guitars are insanely crunchy. The lyrics are super nerdy. Just super nerdy white boy. Uh, it's got a guitar solo to die for when the music drops out. And it's just a... All comes back in. Just a perfect little touch. Uh, the little bits of synth um, that come in. I think it's just an immaculately crafted tune that, you know, you, you, you want to listen to it over and over and over again. Like you, I've, I've heard it eight bajillion times. My band plays it. I'm not sick of it at all. I still love it. Uh, number six for me is Wildflowers by Tom Petty, the title track. Could have gone with almost anything from this record. Uh, but for, for this one, it's something about the sound of the guitar and like the way the gentle piano comes in and joins it. And like just like the air around Tom's voice, it's just like a a perfect match between the lyrics and the actual sonic quality of the music. I think it's just a beautiful track. All right, my number five. People probably associate this song with 95, maybe even 96. But uh, it did come out in 1994. Kiss from a Rose by Seal. And I don't think I heard it in 94. I heard it with the Batman Forever soundtrack. Uh, the Grammy nominees, 95 or 96. It was probably 95 it was on. No, it was probably 96. The way the Grammys work, it's always a year later. Um, but I heard this song and I had to get that cassette with this song on it. I didn't even know how albums worked yet. I was like 10 years old. I just knew I had to have Kiss from a Rose at my fingertips on demand. And I love it. I love uh, Seal's voice. It's a gorgeous vocal performance. I love the acapella intro when the orchestration and the strings come in. It's just so cinematic, so big. Uh, it's just amazing. All right. My number five is my last selection from DGC Rarities. I've got Mad Dog 2020 by Teenage Fan Club. This was the first Teenage Fan Club song I ever heard, and it's still probably my favorite Teenage Fan Club song. I think it's just an incredible power pop tune, just like the peak of the genre relegated to this Rarities compilation. Uh, terrific melody, great harmonies, cool little guitar licks all through it, and a great jangly 12 string solo. So yeah, it's a great one. My number four, going back to Blur for This Is A Low, the penultimate track on Park Life, the piece de resistance, all built around Graham Coxon's restless guitar. It's just an unceasing storm of builds and builds and, and come downs, tension and release, uh, just wave after wave of emotion. I love his kind of use of dissonance, um, Alburn's really cathartic vocals. It's just a brilliant song. Love the guitar solo. Love everything about it. Uh, number four for me is Mrs. You and Me by Smoking Popes. This is basically the Smiths with 90s alt-rock guitars. Uh, the main opening guitar riff is just awesome. There's some really cool chord changes that kind of go outside of the key. And yeah, there's a really nice melodic guitar solo. And I think it's just a really great, well-written tune. And uh, I love the lyrics, too. He's just thinking about asking his girl to marry him. All right, but just... Songs I've not heard before. This song I think everyone's heard. It's a classic of rap. One of my favorite rap songs of all time. Regulators! Mount up. 
<clears throat> yes, regulate Warren G. And uh, there's just something about this song. It's so playful and also like really violent if you really listen to it. But I think people just sort of paper over the fact that Nate Dogg's just gunning down all these people. And Nate Dogg is the hero. I, I do love the way that Warren G on his own song is kind of the sucker that gets jumped. Uh, and then Nate Dogg kind of pops in, shoots everybody. And then they go get a you know a bunch of girls and go to a motel or whatever. And it's it's just a great story. The, the production samples Michael McDonald. It's awesome. It's just a lot of space in it. The baseline rules. And then like after the story is over, there's like two minutes about just, you know, rhythm and gangsta and West Coast sound and, you know, the G-Funk era where rhythm is life and life is rhythm. It makes no sense, but it's just a great song. All right. Number three for me is End of the Tour by They Might Be Giants. And it's the last song on John Henry after an album full of like weird experiments and goofy asides and in jokes and satire and all the different things that they might be giants do they the johns hit us with an honest to god pop gem just a straight up amazing immaculate pop song it's so good it's incredible and it's crazy that they put made it the last song on like a 20 track album uh but yeah it's great all right we got a little change at the top my number one before was grace uh i was probably lying it's my number two though it's still amazing the mix of styles, the perfect guitars, the acoustic guitar sounds so good on this song. Whole album, really, but this song. Uh, it's just a relentless, restless tune. Buckley's vocals, uh, just one of the purest and most powerful vocal performances I think I've ever heard. Uh, he's just wailing and crying out. And uh, it's just, it's amazing. It's an incredible song. It's more epic. It's louder. It's it's more of a, a rock, a muscular rock song, but I don't know. I mean, it's a great song, but Jeff Buckley's vocals just is what makes it like one of my favorite songs of all time. Uh, my number two is Pillar of Davidson by Live. To me, this is like the ultimate in delayed gratification. The song's just kind of like lurching along. It's got this cool bass line. You get the refrain or what you think is the refrain of Old Bad Eyes. It goes back to another verse goes to that old bad eyes section again and then it it just lifts it's like the most amazing lift into that into that section that you realize then is the actual chorus you don't get a chorus in this song until two and a half minutes in i think it's just so it's not really like a catchy chorus it just soars and uh it's magnificent and then it comes again and then they add the uh, kind of like counter melody to it the third time and it just keeps building and building and it's just an epic song. Yeah, that one's been stuck in my head this whole week and I almost threw it on my list, but there's just too many good songs. But yeah, I know exactly what you're talking about with that ending. Fantastic. Uh, my number one, though, I got to go back to a song. I don't know, it really just has been part of my life and my musical life for a really long time now. No excuses from Allison Chains. And I was listening to it this week, and you know, I've always loved it, but maybe I grew a little tired of it in the past 10 years. So I've heard it infinite amount of times, played it a bunch of times with an old band. But I just I'm I'm so impressed with the band and what they can do. Going softer, bringing the acoustic guitars, does like little flittering drums. Uh, that muscular bass line and you know the dynamics and the dichotomy between the darkness and the light you know when when they harmonize those vocals lane staley and jerry cantrell are just so beautiful there's so much pain in them but it's just some of the most beautiful sounds um i think humans can make and it's just everything about the song rules that little solo it's just there's so much feel. It's nothing like super fancy, but it sounds so good. And yeah, the the lightness and the darkness in this one, uh, I just love it. It's uh, it's always been one of my favorites, and I'm I'm putting it back on top for this uh, deep dive. Well, I am sticking with my original song of the year winner. I've got "Lover," "You Should Have Come Over" by Jeff Buckley, and 
could have picked any of the Jeff Buckley originals to put in this spot, pretty much. Thinking about what makes this one stand out, I think this one just has a slightly more timeless feel to it than all the other ones on the record. I think all the other ones, I can kind of envision a guy writing in, in 1994, uh, but this one doesn't feel like some like a 27-year-old wrote it in 1993 or whatever, whenever he wrote it. So uh, it, it just has a quality to it that kind of feels akin to something like Lilac Wine or, or something that had been around quite a bit longer. So yeah, I, I just think it's a, a beautiful track. His singing is great on it. His phrasing is amazing. It's just uh, great. The band is fantastic. So yeah, nothing about it I don't like. All right. Well, zero in common. That might be a first for any list ever. Really? We had quite a few um, selections from the same albums. We did. Yes. I think five or six of the same artists anyway. Uh, but nothing, nothing in common. That's that's pretty surprising. All right. Well, let us know what you think of our list. What songs did we miss? What are your favorites of the year? You can drop all that stuff in the comments. Hit the like button, subscribe, hit the bell for notifications, check the video description for links to Patreon and merch and all that good stuff. And we will see you in the next one.